Uh, start recording. Okay. Hey guys, thank you so much uh, for attending this uh, this 10x virtual meeting. Uh, we're doing this every week. Uh, this this week we haven't really focused on promoting it, which is why we have a bit less people than usual. Uh, but uh, we're going to have an insane meeting today. We're going to talk about stuff that's going to completely change your life, whether you're just starting out in business or whether you're already at a multi-million dollar level. So uh, let me quickly introduce you to the topic today. Uh, today we're going to talk about a mindset, an abundance mindset, uh, a filter you could say you can put on the world that if you engage in this filter, if you start looking at the world in the way that I'm going to explain to you right now, it's going to change your life so radically uh, that it's going to make you essentially uh, able to accomplish anything that you want in life. So I've actually used this filter to accomplish uh, almost every single uh, big thing that I've accomplished in my life, uh, from finding my dream woman uh, to going on crazy, crazy adventures, uh, filling out hundreds of people in lecture seats, uh, starting a seven-figure company at age 26, uh, and many, many other things that I've accomplished uh, and am accomplishing today. So just to be very clear, uh, we're going to have a time for a Q&A at the end. So if you guys uh, have any questions for me, uh, please uh, reserve them to the end and we'll be able to get to them. Uh, in the meantime, if there's any problem with the audio, any issue or anything, just uh, feel free to text in the, in the comments and let me know. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining and let's, uh, let's start. So first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is the idea of filters. So filters is, is a concept that most people are just not really aware of. Uh, most people think that their reality is completely objective. So they think that the way that I'm right now, I'm looking at life is objective, meaning that whatever I'm seeing right now, if I'm seeing uh, right now different situations in my life, uh, let's say, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I have, uh, you know, this uh, thing in, in, in this situation, in my bank account, I have this situation in my business, this situation in my relationship. What people tend to assume is that the way that they're looking at things is the correct way. And that's one of the biggest mistakes we make in life is assuming that the way we're viewing reality is the correct way. It's basically the one correct way and ever, anybody who looks at things differently is probably wrong. And the way you know you can relate to this is if you look at kids, for example, for a kid, let's say that they're five minutes late for, late for school or that one kid laughed at them at school, that could ruin their entire day. They could be the worst thing in the world. And when you look at it as an adult and you think, you know, you just think to yourself, okay, that doesn't make sense at all, at all. You know, it's, it's basically just a child and that's the way that they view the world. But also if you look at something like politics, uh, you know, just where, whether you're right, left, uh, you know, uh, 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 capitalist or, or uh, communist, whatever it is, um, if you look at your beliefs right now and the way that you're interpreting things, you know, what your views about politics, religion, uh, economics, uh, you probably think that the other people, the people that believe the other thing, that they're wrong, that the way that they're looking at things is completely wrong. And that should be an indicator for you that uh, reality is not objective, that reality is very much in the eye of the perceiver. Uh, and it really, really shows and it really changes uh, just based on where you're coming from. Uh, you can also look at a few different people that saw the exact same situation. They would generally describe it in very, very different ways. And we're especially seeing that today with social media. So filters, it basically means, fil the idea of filters basically means that two people can look at the same thing and see something completely different. You can, two people can look at the same movie on screen and see a completely different movie. And if you want to learn more about that, uh, you can read a book called Win Bigly by a guy named Scott Adams. He's the creator of the Dilbert comic book. Uh, and he basically goes in depth in there, in that book about filters and how they work and what they mean. Uh, but I'd give you like a really, a very basic kind of introduction to it uh, because I want to introduce you to the following topic. So my filter, uh, the way that I view life, the way that I uh, conduct myself and the way that I'm trying to reinforce on a day-to-day -day basis is what I call the zero loss gain filter. Zero loss gain. Uh, basically, this is the filter that I've used to accomplish everything that I did in my life. And this filter, this way of looking at the world, which, which you can adopt, by the way, you can adopt different ways of looking at the world based on your experience. Uh, this filter is going to make you immune, literally immune to fear, immune to pain, immune to stagnation. It's going to make your life a lot more fun, creative and satisfying. So it's going to bring a lot of positivity into your life. 
It's going to maximize the chances of you becoming successful. So whatever it is you want to accomplish in your life, whether again on a relationship basis, health basis, business basis, uh, it's going to maximize your chances of getting that done. Uh, and I'm now going to basically break down how this pillar works, how this uh, filter works, the different pillars uh, behind it. And by the way, if you guys think I should uh, move closer to the mic, uh, cl closer to the, the video, further away or anything, just feel free to let me know because I'm seeing myself on a pretty small screen. So um, basically this, uh, this filter uh, is uh, made up of five different pillars. Uh, the five pillars are number one, you can't lose. Number two, there's a hidden 99% of the world that you're not aware of. Number three is avoiding the attention grabbers. And number four is quality of life is determined by quality of questions. And number five is the infinite amount of attempts that you have. And by the way, we're going to get, we're going to give you guys a summary of this uh, entire lecture. So don't, you can write things down. I would strongly suggest that. And research shows that if you take notes while you're listening, there's about a, about a 80% more chance that you'll actually remember it. So definitely write it down. However, if, even if you don't, uh, there's going to be a summary. But again, I would strongly suggest uh, write down anything that you think is, is useful for you or just write down everything and, and just take what works and, you know, highlight it. So uh, basically, uh, the first pillar of, the, of this, uh, this filter that I'm using is, again, the can't lose mentality. And it's going to sound a bit wacky, but I'm going to propose right now that it's absolutely impossible to fail or lose absolutely in life until you die. So I know this is a pretty big claim. Like you cannot fail, you cannot lose, no matter what you do, no matter what happens, no matter if your business crashed, you're in millions of dollars of debt, you, you went to prison, you, to to, you have to go to prison, your wife left you, your husband left you, uh, everything just went to crap. Just everything you can imagine that went wrong, imagine it went wrong 10 times worse. Uh, you cannot possibly fail or lose in your life absolute, on an absolute level until you die. Now, why is that? It's because as long as you are alive, you always have an opportunity to correct things. You always have an opportunity to try again, to make things better. And just to give you an example, think of people like Nelson Mandela. So everybody here probably knows Nelson Mandela, and if not, you should definitely Google him. But basically, Nelson Mandela uh, was, prison, was imprisoned. He was, he was a resistance fighter in Africa, and he was imprisoned for 27 years of his life. So he spent, imagine spending 27 years of your life in jail for, wait for it, not something that he didn't even do. <laughs> so imagine being put in jail for 27 years of your life, not seeing your family, not talking to anybody, being around the worst people in the world. And you know what happened? He came out of there. He wrote one of the best books in the world called The Long Road to Freedom. And he managed to change the entire continent of Africa and uh, basically uh, end the subjugation that was happening there. So this guy became one of the world's most inspirational and renowned figures after spending 27 years of his life in jail. You also have Gandhi who made almost every possible mistake you can make uh, and was living a life full of regret and misery and depression. And when the opportunity was right, even though he was an absolute failure, he rose up and he changed the, the entire continent of India. Or you can look at somebody like Col Colonel Sanders from KFC. Uh, the guy had like six or seven failed businesses in a row. Now, none of them took off. The last one was somewhat successful, but even that ended up crashing. And he ended up on the eighth business, I believe, founding KFC, which every single person here probably knows KFC and, and also probably ate at KFC at some point. Uh, so, so you cannot lose enough times uh, before you have, there's no amount of times where if you fail enough, you're dead or, or it's done or you cannot try anymore. As long as you're alive, or let me even be more clear, the basic rule is as long as you can talk, as long as I have my mouth and I can use it to speak, or as long as I can use my hands, as long as I have these hands, I can type on a keyboard, I can write stuff, I can't lose. You know, I can't. I mean, unless I died. Why? Because I still have tools that enable me to do anything. Just think as an orator, as somebody who can use his mouth to speak or can use his hand to write, you always have another chance. You always have the next thing you can do uh, as long as you have these basic tools. And even then, by the way, even then you have a woman like Helen Keller, one of the world's uh, most, most revered and inspirational figures. Uh, sh she was mute, so she couldn't speak. She was deaf 
She couldn't hear and she was blind. She couldn't see and she was still a successful person who wrote, who wrote many books and inspired millions of people and even made a good living off of it. So there's really no excuse. There's no reason why you can lose. And that takes off so much pressure just knowing that you cannot lose. No matter what you do, you can't lose. You can fail temporarily, you can have setbacks, but you cannot lose. And here's the crazy thing. Even if you quit, even if today you quit, you, you give up, you go bankrupt, you decide for you know next five years you're gonna be a, an absolute failure, you still didn't fail. You know, because you, why? Because even if you quit, you're alive, so you can try again. You know, you can five years from now, you can, you know, 20 years from now, you can be an absolute failure for the next 20 years. You can try again as long as you're alive. So the only caveat is you need to be alive. As long as you're alive, you cannot fail. If you really, really adopt this pillar uh, and take it into your life, what's going to happen is it's going to take the pressure off of failure. It's going to make you not that uh, pressured to be successful, not that pressured to not have failures in your life because you're going to say, okay, no matter what happens, no matter how bad it gets, as long as I'm alive, I can always go back again. I can always try again. So it's never too late. And what do I gain in the meantime? I gain experience, I gain knowledge. Okay, and that's just pillar one, by the way, out of five. If you want extra reading on that, if you want to learn more uh, about this pillar, I would highly suggest reading uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Dr. Viktor Frankl. He's a Jewish Holocaust survivor and also a psychologist. Uh, and he details there in this book about his experience in the Holocaust and how people in the worst condition of their life, people who were highly successful and went into the lowest point of their life, still managed to find happiness, still managed to find joy just by managing to look at the situation in a different way. And, and by the way, how these people uh, were statistically much more likely to survive and thrive even after everything that happened. So that's pillar one. Pillar number two. What I call this is the hidden 99.9%. .9%. So at any moment, you know, if you right now you look at your life and you look at what you're paying attention to, it's probably the same things every day. So it's probably the same problems. And if you can't try ignoring the cleaner in the background, uh, although I'm more distracted than in the you are probably. Um, if in life, uh, there's basically uh, whatever you pay attention to. So uh, you have the bills, you have the business, you have different problems, you have the clients, you have your wife everything that's demanding your attention. And whenever you have a situation, there's always the, the, the part of the situation that's very visible to you, uh, but there's also an infinite, literally an infinite amount of stuff that's hidden that you don't even see. So imagine right now, uh, you're here and you're listening to this, uh, to this uh, uh, lecture. So right now, probably the only thing you're thinking right now is, okay, I'm listening, I'm trying to get information. And that's the situation is I'm listening and I'm trying to get information. Um, that's the only thing that I can do. So you look at the situation and you don't see one op, you know, one option, maybe, maybe two or three. Okay. So I can listen, I can write notes or I can just leave. Okay. Whatever. Th these are the situations. What you're missing is that at any moment, there's an infinite amount of possibilities that you can take leading to an infinite amount of more possibilities with each subsequent moment. So what does that mean? At any moment, there's an infinite amount of ideas you can think of, you know? So right now you're thinking, okay, I'm listening to this. That's the only thing I'm doing. That's what's happening. You're missing the fact that in any moment right now, you can think of an infinite amount of ideas. You can have an infinite amount of thoughts, you know, not at the same time, but there's an infinite amount of possibilities. You can think right now of red elephants, or you can think right now about how to make your, make your next million dollars. You can have your next biggest idea in five seconds from now. So five seconds from now, the best idea you've ever had can suddenly appear. You can ask an infinite amount of questions. You can ask, uh, do I have milk in the fridge? Or you can ask, how do I make my next million dollars next month? So, so you can ask an infinite amount of questions. You can have an infinite amount of perspectives with filters. So you can have a filter right now that says, uh, Robbie is amazing. This is a crazy lecture. I'm getting so much knowledge and I think this is going to change my life. Or you can change immediately, just change to a different filter that says, I have no idea what he's talking about, he's unreliable, and I don't want to listen to him. Or you can immediately change to another filter, which is, um, you know, right now, this lecture is going to change my life. You can change any filter at any point. Or, or another filter, by the way, you can say is, I, oh my God, I don't have time, uh, life is so short, and I need to do something right now because life is short and YOLO. So, or, or you can say, life is very long, and I have time, and let's just have fun. So you can look at 
life in a million different ways. In any moment, there's an infinite amount of uh, ways you can look at it. And there's also an infinite amount of actions you can take. So right now, you can send me a message here and say, uh, hey, Robbie, uh, I like trees. Or you can right now pick up your phone and text your wife or husband or girlfriend or boyfriend or a good friend of yours and say, I love you. Okay, or right now, at this very moment, you can pick up the phone and call a prospect that you're dying to close. Or right now, you can go to Facebook, you can post a picture of your screen and say, hey, I'm in an amazing lecture right now. There's an infinite, or you can just, by the way, stand up and just begin dancing like this. There's an infinite amount of things you can do right now. There's an infinite amount of actions that you can take at any possible moment. And it's new actions and thoughts and ideas and questions and perspective that create progress in life. There's nothing else that creates progress in life. So if you knew you had an infinite amount of possibilities at any moment, an infinite amount of stuff you can do, think of, uh, uh, see the world by, then why are you not more creative in your life? Why are you not looking at every situation and asking yourself, what's like a million things I can do right now? And, and so this second pillar, what it does is it opens up your mind to be able to look at any situation and say at any moment right now, I have an infinite amount of possibilities that are going to lead to an infinite amount of more possibilities. So that way, if you apply both principles, so the can't lose mentality, meaning there's nothing I can do that can make me fail right now. I cannot fail no matter what happens. The worst thing in the world right now can happen. As long as I'm alive, I did not fail. You take that, you add the hidden 99.99% and you say, okay, there's nothing I can do that can nothing that can happen to me that can mean that can mean that i failed and also there is an infinite amount of possibilities that i can take at any moment okay so that already should get your juices flowing because it means that there's nothing to fear and there's an infinite amount of possibilities now the third principle is what i call avoiding the attention grabbers and again if anybody has any questions if it's some big 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 question that's related to something we're talking about right now uh, feel free to either write it down or just uh, text it right now and I'll try to get to it. If not, then uh, we'll have a time for Q&A at the end. So uh, third one, avoiding the attention grabbers. So in life, there's a lot of things that want your attention. You've probably noticed that as you get older, more and more things want your attention. It's just an exponential thing. So if you're 20 years old, there's like five things that want your attention. So it's like social media, your friends, your mom, homework, and some other stuff, you know, maybe your job. Uh, if you're 30 years old, there's the kids, there's the mortgage, there's, there's a, now there's a lot more stuff that wants your attention. Uh, if you're 40, 50, again, the more older you get, the more things want your attention. And it's like a bell curve until you get to like 60 and then gradually it goes down. Um, if you're gonna pay attention to all of these attention uh, uh, grabbers, all of these things that want your attention that say, notice me, notice me, notice me. Again, it can be your wife and she nags you and she needs something. It can be a text message that you got, a notification, what happened in the news, this client wants something. Uh, There's just an infinite amount of things in life that are going to grab your attention, both, by the way, positive and negative. So I'm not just talking about bad things. I'm also talking about, oh, I made a sale or, oh, uh, 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 this person liked my post, you know positive stuff as well. So if you're going to pay attention to all of these things demanding your attention, what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that you get more of what you already have. So by paying attention to the different things that come up, and again, if you notice right now, just stop everything you're doing for a second, focus, and see what's happening. So see how maybe your phone is buzzing right now. Maybe you have a thought in your head that says, oh, I should check the, my emails. Maybe suddenly you have a thought that says, uh, oh, uh, this is boring, let's do this. Or maybe suddenly your wife calls you. Maybe suddenly uh, something in the news comes up. Just wait 20 seconds and you'll see that something comes up. Again, whether externally or internally. So if you keep paying attention to everything that comes up all the time, you're only going to get more of what you already have. So it's only going to reinforce your current reality. If you absolutely love your current reality, do it, okay? Keep paying attention to everything that's coming up. However, if your reality right now is not amazing and, and you're absolutely satisfied with it, uh, then you should do something different. You should, at every moment, stop and ask yourself, what is the 99.99% that I'm not aware of right now? What am I missing right now that I could be paying attention to? What do I mean? Take a moment, stop for a second, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. 
Okay, take a deep breath. And pay attention to your breath. Again, one more time, take a deep breath. Now you've been breathing, I assume, for the entire lecture right now. Have you paid attention to the fact that you've been breathing? Probably not. Now close your eyes again, be quiet, and try to hear if there's any noise in the background. I'm gonna be quiet. Try listening if there's any noise in the background. So right now, there's probably cars, maybe air conditioning. There's noise in the background. Were you aware of that before? Probably not. Now here's the crazy part. This is just physical stuff. So your breath, the environment, that's just physical stuff. What about the 99.99999% that you're not aware of, such as paying your bills, such as where's the next sale gonna come from, such as where's my wife or husband or, or, or best friend, such as how can I make another million dollars this month? Every single question you can ask yourself, every single thing that's happening right now, you're not paying attention to it. By the fact that you can only pay attention to one thing at a time, and if you're a woman, then one, one and a half things. That's, that's all you can do. So just ask yourself, I'm paying attention to this one thing, and there's an infinity of stuff I can be paying attention to. So what am I missing? What am I not paying attention to right now that I could be that would make my life better? And, and that will change your life. So what I would suggest to you, this is gonna sound a bit crazy, but that's just the way it works. Don't trust your senses. Don't trust your emotions. Don't trust your thoughts. Don't, tr don't trust anything. So something came up, it caught your attention. Just assume at every single moment that what you're paying attention to is probably what you, you the wrong thing. How can I say that with absolute certainty? That what you're paying attention to is the wrong thing? Because statistically, if there's an infinite amount of things you can pay attention to, literally an infinite amount of things, again, from your environment to any question in the world, anything you can pay attention to, what are the odds that what you're paying attention to right now is the right thing? So again, imagine there's, there's, there's a billion people lined up and we ask you, pick the right person and you choose a random person or somebody says, me, 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 and you pay attention to them. What are the odds that out of a billion people, that is the right person you should pay attention to? Now multiply a billion by infinity and you know, that, that's your statistic likelihood. So at any moment, assume what I'm paying attention to is probably the wrong thing. And, and just stop trusting your senses, stop trusting your emotions or thoughts. So if your emotions are telling you, this is important, you need to pay attention to this, you should probably not pay attention to that. That's probably the wrong thing. If your thoughts are saying, this is important, blah, 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 blah they're probably leading you towards the wrong path. If your senses are saying, oh, I have to notice this, it's probably the wrong thing. Just always assume I'm paying attention to the right thing, to the wrong thing. These are instinctive reactions that basically were created over time through your upbringing. So your environment, your upbringing, upbringing uh, that's what created your mental makeup, your psychological state. And that is what's going to make you attracted to different things. So again, unless your life is the best it can possibly be, you have the best life in the world, uh, just assume you're not paying attention to the right things and do not trust your senses, do not trust your emotions, do not trust your thoughts. And remember that growth in life, growth is always going to feel weird and uncomfortable. Growing, and I'm not just saying growing as in, uh, you know, you're a kid and you grow and, you know, oh, what, what's, what is that hair? Where is that hair coming from? Or why am I feeling weird? Or, oh, suddenly I have this muscle I didn't notice. Like, that's what happens when you grow in life as a kid to an adult, but at the same time, when your business grows, it's, it's gonna feel weird. You're gonna feel very uncomfortable and gonna feel very weird and unsure of yourself. That is a very, very good sign. And if you're not feeling that, that doesn't mean you have a good business. That means you're not growing fast enough. That's the only thing it can mean. And you need to start getting very comfortable with feeling very uncomfortable most of the time. So if you can just get to a point where most of the time you just feel confused and uncomfortable and like, oh crap, what's going on? That's a very, very good situation because what that means is you're probably in growth. So if it feels intuitive, if your intuition is saying you're in the right place, this is where you should be, this is exactly what you should be doing, it's probably the wrong thing. Again, if your goal is massive growth and incredible life, if it feels intuitive, don't do it. If it feels like you're in free fall and like you're basically falling down without a parachute, 
then you're probably in the right direction. So basically, if you're feeling like, oh my God, what's happening? What's going on? Then you're probably doing the right thing. And how do you validate that? How do you actually validate that you are in the right direction? The answer is you have to go back and look at your statistics. So you have to be able to find measurable data that you personally gather that would be important for you to validate that reality. So for example, if you're feeling like, oh my God, what's going on? This is crazy, this is confusing, but your website's engagement is just shooting up, your website visitors are shooting up, or your income is just shooting up. If you're feeling these kind of things, then you're probably in the right direction. So, so again, validate it with statistics. Just because you're confused and things are crazy, that does not mean you're in the right place, but it is a sign that you might be in the right place. Make sure, again, to validate it with statistics. Uh, so that's principle number three. So again, principle number one, you cannot lose. No matter what happens, you cannot fail. That brings down the pressure. Principle number two, there's an infinite amount of things that you can think of, ideas, questions, the hidden 99.999%. Principle number three, avoid the attention grabbers. Again, always assume that what you're focusing on is the wrong thing. And now principle number four, what I call this is the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions you ask. So in life, give me a moment to sip. Ah, okay. In life, if you're not where you want to be right now, uh, that is a direct result. That, that means only one thing. It means you're not asking the right questions. So imagine, so what do I mean by that? Imagine that your brain is a massive database that includes every piece of information you've ever gathered. So every, every piece of experience, every data point, every second and every moment of the day, your brain is recording data. And some of that data, it puts in the important parts in the important uh, sections, some in the not important. Again, if you guys are, are, are kind of nerds like me, imagine it's a no, SQL basis, a no SQL database that's just an infinite amount of data and it just keeps growing at every single moment. And what your brain can do is basically gather an infinite amount of data that it's recording in every moment, every single thing, whether you're aware of it or not. And at the same time, it's a machine that can make an ex extremely complex intuitive calculations immediately. So it doesn't take your brain time to think. It's, it's actually an error to think that it takes you time to think. And the best thinking you can do is actually not the thinking that you, you know, sit down and think and think, but it's actually the kind of thinking where you just set your attention some, intention at something and suddenly, boom, you get a reply back. So that's the best kind of thinking you can do. And it's actually been proven uh, like physicists have actually uh, attested that their greatest breakthroughs, people like Einstein have attested that their greatest uh, uh, moments, their greatest epiphanies actually came at moments of not thinking where they just intuitively came up with the answer. Like when you're in the bathroom or, or in the shower, like boom, and suddenly that comes in. And you need a bit of quiet, by the way, to do that. So if you're on your phone all the time and you know you can't go to the bathroom without being on your phone, you're probably not going to have as many intuitions. So you know, small side note, keep that in mind. So anyway, if you're not engaging, if you're not asking yourself high, high quality questions, then you're missing out on the greatest superpower that life has given you, which is your mind. And let me give you some examples. So basically just, uh, again, take a deep breath. And again, if you haven't done it yet, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Now ask yourself a question. How can I make, and again, ask, actually ask yourself this, how can I make as much money tomorrow as I made last month? So how can I make as much money in one day as I made this past month? Okay, think of how much money you made last month. And now ask yourself, how can I make this much in one day? Now think how much money did you make this entire year? You know, this crappy 2020 year with COVID and everything. How much money did I make this year? How can I make this much money in one day? Now what's going to happen is your brain is going to start thinking. It's going to go and it's going to start bringing, throwing stuff at you. It's going to say, oh, I don't know. I can do this. So maybe this, maybe this. And then the thinking is going to come in. So then, you know, your brain is going to give you an idea and then the thinking is going to come in. So it's going to say, oh, that's not going to work because of this and this. So again, ignore the thoughts. The thoughts are just reactive, automatic uh, reactions. They're, they're not good. You know, your thoughts are usually automatic and they're 
they're basically uh, learned behavior. So always assume, again, you cannot trust your thoughts. Wherever your thoughts are taking you, that's probably the wrong thing. You know, whatever your thoughts are telling you, focus on this, feel this. It's probably, you're probably focusing on the wrong thing. Remember, that's principle number three. Okay, so you're going to have an intuition. I can do this. Stay with that intuition, okay? Or ask yourself another question. What can I do today that will make me invincible tomorrow? So what can I do today that is going to give, make my day, give me the best day in the world tomorrow or going to make me invincible, going to make, put me in a situation where I have the best life in the world tomorrow? What resources, ask yourself this, what resources am I currently not using that if I start using are going to make my life 10 times better? Ask yourself, what can I offer my clients today so that they'll pay me twice as much money tomorrow? Or ask yourself, how do I create a life of complete abundance and freedom? So I'm pasting the questions here. Just an example, by the way. It's, it's, it's literally just a few example questions that I came up with before the, the call. And again, there's an infinite amount of questions you can ask yourself. And you never know which one is the right one. So the problem is with, with questions like this is that you're not going to be asking these questions if you don't fully apply the principles above. So what does that mean? If you don't believe that no matter what happens, you cannot lose, you cannot fail, you're not going to focus on these kind of questions because you're going to think, oh, that's dangerous. I shouldn't do that. That's not going to work. You know, so, so you're automatically going to block out a lot of questions. Or if you, if you are not aware of the hidden 99%, uh, if you're not aware that uh, there's an infinity uh, that you're not aware of, then again, you're not going to spend time thinking of these questions because you're not going to be aware that these questions even exist. Or if you focus on the intention grabbers too much. So, you know, oh, the bills, my wife needs this, the client needs that. If you let your, the attention grabbers grab all your attention and you don't automatically say, whatever wants my attention, it's probably the wrong thing to focus at right now. Again, almost 100% the wrong thing. Um, or you can even say, again, it's absolutely the wrong thing, just depending how much, uh, how far you want to take this philosophy. If you're not going to do those, you're not going to be able to ask the right kind of questions because life is just going to grab you and, and it's just going to, take you on a huge spin and you're, you're not going to have the time to stop and actually ask these high quality questions. So uh, just keep that in mind. You have to practice these different pillars in your life. You have to reinforce them or else you're not just not going to ask these questions. And on the other side, imagine how your life looked if every day you asked yourself a question like this. Imagine if every day you asked yourself, what can I do today that's going to make me the healthiest version of me? What can I do today that's going to make me more money than ever before? What can I do this year that's going to set me, secure my, myself financially for the next 10 years, okay? Well, imagine how your life would look if every day you were able to ask yourself these questions. And again, if you try to do that without the other pillars, you're not going to be able to because life is just going to drag you. You have to be able to, you have to practice everything to get it done. And again, we're going to give you a, a, a summary at the end of the recording. So don't worry if you haven't uh, grabbed everything. Um, so that's the principle number four. Finally, principle number five, which uh, might be my favorite because I'm a 10x action taker. I like to take massive action and massive unreasonable actions in everything that I do. Uh, principle number four is what I call uh, the, infin the infinite amount of attempt. There's an infinite amount of attempts. And what I mean by that is this. Imagine uh, if you played poker and, you've, and somebody just, the dealer told you, uh, you know, hey, Robin or, or hey, Erkan, or hey, Alin, or hey, Arun, uh, you have an infinite amount of chips, an infinite amount of hands you can take. So, so whatever you get in the game, you're gonna, it, it, whatever you win, it's gonna be yours. Uh, and you can play as much as you want. There's an infinite amount of chips. You can literally bet as much as you want at any time. Um, what would you do? You know, how would you play? What kind of style of playing would you have? So mathematically, the right style of playing would be to go all in every single time. So Basically, at any point, what you do is you go all in, all in, all in. And just for anybody who is not savvy at poker, what that means is every time you go for the full uh, prize. Uh, you risk the most to get the most. Why? Because, you know, I, I have an infinite amount of attempts, so why not? So imagine now that your life is like that. And, the, the, and in fact, it is. Why am I saying that it is? Because, again, you cannot fail. You cannot absolutely fail until you died. And so 
until you're dead, you can try out an infinite amount of things. You can open a business every day for the rest of your life and see what happens. You can, uh, you can text 100 people to, right now. Right now, you can open up your phone and text 100 different people. Uh, right now, you can create any email and send it to anybody in the world. And that one email might change your life completely. Right now, you can set up uh, Facebook ads. Right now, you can sign up to a coaching call with me, by the way, which you can do by going to primatica.com slash 10x, and you're going to see the link in chat below uh, if you want to sign up for a coaching call with uh, me. So um, you can do anything. You can do as much as you want. Again, that's principle number uh, number uh, two. Uh, it's the hidden 99%, you know, the hidden 99.99%. There's an infinite amount of thoughts, ideas, uh, actions I can take. You know, think about the, the deal you want to close. There's an infinite amount of things you can do to close that deal. Think of uh, marrying the, the most attractive person in the world. You, you can do stuff to move to, towards that. You can do anything at any, moment, at any moment. So there's literally an infinite amount of attempts you can take. And again, I cannot stress this further. Like you can do anything right now and it's gonna create a result. Now you should assume that 90 to 99% of what you try is not gonna work, okay? That's just the way life works. Anywhere from 90% to 99% of our uh, our attempts in life are not going to work. You know, you email somebody, they don't reply. You know, you email 50 people, they don't reply. You you try to close a sale, it didn't work. You went up to the, the most beautiful guy or girl you've seen on the street, they reject you. You know, it's just going to, you know, you start a business, it fails. Like 90 to 99% of what you're going to try is going to fail anyway. So number one, you want to try as many things as you can because some of them are going to work. And if you only try five things in life, there's a good chance that zero are going to work. If you try 500, then there's a good chance that five or 10 are going to work. And if you try 50,000, then there's a good chance that 5,000 are going to work. Okay. So you, you want to try as many things as possible in life because remember, you only have to get rich once. You only have to find the right mate, the right husband or wife once you only have to 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 you know anything you want to get in life you only have to get it once after you've done it once you can do it again you know because you've learned how to do it and and second time it gets easier third time it's, it's super easy you know so you can take somebody like uh any successful business owner and they can lose everything today they'll probably build back to the same level in two or three years from zero <laughs> because nobody can take away your experience nobody can take away your confidence and so Try out as many things as possible. But here's a caveat. Here's a very, very, very important caveat. When you do try things, make sure to go big. <laughs> and why is that? Because success creates commitments. So when you fail, it doesn't create commitment. So let's say I email you, I email somebody who's a potential deal and he doesn't reply. There's no commitment, you know? Or let's say I, I, I went up to some woman in the street and she rejected me. By the way, I'm married with a child, so I'm not doing that. Um, uh, you know, let's say you walk up to somebody, some woman or guy in the street and you say, hi, you try to get their number. They say, no, they leave. There's no commitment because the situation did not work. So what that means is that 90 to 99% of what you try, since it's going to fail, it's not going to create a commitment. However, success does create a commitment. What does that mean? That means that when you ask a woman out and she says, yes, now you're committed because you've committed to going out with her. Once you start a business and you have a few clients, you know, first client, you're committed. He paid you. You got to give him something back. So success creates commitments. So you want to make sure that whatever you try, do it big. Because once fi something finally works, you know, you tried 50 different things, 100 different things, make sure it's the right thing and big enough so that you don't regret it later because you just committed to something that's small and not satisfying. So when you go out and you try to get that prospect to purchase from you and you contact a hundred people, try to get them to buy, make sure it's the right people because if, and for the right price, for a big enough price, because if you close the wrong person or at a lower price than you want, you're committed now. So you're screwed. So go for the, you know, go for big, go for broke, you know, whatever you do, Make it big, you know, make a bigger offer, offer to more people, offer to the best people. Uh, you know, you want to go find a, a, a relationship, go to the, the hottest person you can find. Start there because once you actually get success, 
once something actually worked, you're committed. So it's, it's, you know, don't commit to the wrong thing, which actually happens a lot more often than you think. I mean, 90% of people just fail their entire life and they have like a few small victories and they're committed to those victories, but these victories suck. You know, they found a relationship, but it's a decent relationship. You know, they, they made a few strides toward their wealth, but it's very decent and, and they don't actually get wealthy. So, you know, but they're committed. They have a job, it's 15 years in, you can't quit now, you know, it's a, it's a problem. I mean, you can, but it's not likely. So, so whatever you do, make sure to do it big. So that, that pretty much wraps up the, the five principles. Uh, if you guys have any specific questions about these principles, now would be the time to write your questions. Uh, so, so again, make sure to write them. Uh, however, uh, while you're writing them, while you're, you know, thinking about the questions you can ask me, um, I want to tell you how to actually apply this in your life, which is very important. So, uh, I don't know how much this actually penetrated, how much of what I said, maybe a small part of it did, maybe a large part of it did, hopefully everything. Um, but, um, and if not, again, ask me questions, challenge me because, uh, that would make your, uh, understanding deeper and stronger. So. Let's say right now you're, you're fully bought in. Okay. So let's say you, 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 you've listened to me. You're saying, oh my God, this is insane. The five principles, again, the, I cannot lose no matter what I do. It, it's just, I cannot fail. Uh, there's the hidden 99.99%. So at any moment I can have an infinite amount of ideas, thoughts, questions, and oh, the attention grabber. So I, I'm not supposed to pay attention to what wants my attention. I can, I should assume that I'm paying attention to the wrong thing. Wow, that's life changing. And oh my God, I can ask any question. So I can ask high, high quality questions and that's going to improve my life infinitely. And oh my God, I have an infinite amount of attempts. I can email an infinite amount of people today. I can, I can text as many people as I want. I can call anybody I want. I can do anything I want at any point. So there's, I, I should go big. You know, let's say you, you, you're fully bought in right now. What's going to happen is the first moment that something bad happens. So let's say a minute from now, you get a bad text from a client saying, oh, this didn't happen. This is not okay. Or, or your, your spouse or says, you know, Hey, you should have done this. What about this? Or suddenly a bill comes in and you, you know, suddenly, oh, you're overdue on your electricity bill. And, oh crap. But suddenly you're going to react to it. It's very, very likely there's, there's zero chance that you just listen to me and it's going to be implemented. Okay. And, and let's say something, nothing bad happens today. Let's say you're super inspired. You, you take this, uh, uh, information and you come up with insane ideas and life is super exciting right now. What's going to happen is you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. And the first thing you're going to think of when you wake up is I don't want to get out of bed <laughs> or, you know, whatever state you're having right now, you're going to think, Oh no, no, no. You're not going to be there when you wake up, you're going to wake up in a much different state. So remember that there's always an inclination to go back to old paradigms. It's going to happen. Trust me, either in one minute from now or tomorrow morning. So you have to reinforce that paradigm. Again, the filters that I talked to you about at the beginning, the way you view life, there's an infinite amount of ways you can look at life. I'm just presenting you one of them that is extremely effective and has produced amazing results for me. Okay. So, so you want to remember that this is like a muscle. And the way it works is right now it's, it's a very weak muscle because I just taught you this, but there's not a lot of evidence, not a lot of data that proves that what I'm saying is true. So hopefully I gave you some convincing arguments. I, I gave you some good examples, some arguments that are hard to refute. So that's going to give you a good foundation to start with, but now you have to actually practice it. So what does that mean? That means that when you get the bill, uh, that the, the letter that says, Hey, your electricity is overdue. And you immediately go, Oh no, that's not good. Or, or again, the, the client complains, uh, your wife tells you about something that happened. You're going to get an immediate reaction or you wake up in the morning and you think, Oh my God, I have to take care of this and this and this first. That's the first thing that's going to happen. And, and you need to, to train yourself to react differently You say, Oh, remember the principles, you know, write down the principles. There's nothing I can do that can fail. So there's no pressure, no matter what happens, there's zero pressure. And, and remember again, remember. I can do an infinite amount of things, no matter how strong my reality looks, no matter, you know, the bill is coming in and this is not okay. At any moment, you can change your life completely. You can do something today that is going to change your future completely. You can do something and you can think of a thought, an idea, two minutes from now, that's going to completely revolutionize your life in a way that you've never even imagined. Okay. So remember, uh, 
you're going to have to practice this. And what's going to happen is, let's say again, the, the, the letter comes in with the bill or you wake up and you just don't want to do it. You just remember it again, write down the principle and say, oh yeah, da, 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 da. And apply it immediately. Just again, look at the situation and say, this is not real. This is not real. What I'm saying, what I'm seeing right now, it's happening. You're like, it's not like fake, but the perception is not real. The fact that it looks like this is the only reality, it's not true. There's an infinite amount of realities. There's an infinite amount of ways I can look at this. There's an infinite amount of questions I can ask right now. There's an infinite amount of filters of, of, of questions I can have, of thoughts I can have. Uh, I cannot fail. No matter, just reinforce it again and again. And what you're going to see is suddenly situations are going to happen differently. So suddenly a situation that usually you would react to and it would ruin your day, uh, suddenly you're able to go above it and do something much, much better. Or suddenly, you, you know, you would usually sit down and worry about something. Suddenly you apply these principles. You say, okay, remember the principle, da, 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 da. Boom, some insane thought comes in. Again, the, the most amazing things will come from this, but you have to apply all of the principles because if you're going to apply just one, it's not going to work, okay? Because if you just say, oh, I cannot fail no matter what I do, but then you don't actually take this to do something better, then you're just going to get stagnant and not do anything, which again, you cannot fail even if you do that, but you want to maximize your results. So you do that by applying all five principles. So ask yourself again, how can I apply all five right now? Or which one of them am I not applying? So that's, that's the first thing that I would suggest to you. Second thing, if you want to really cement those, if you want me to train you on these and actually look at them in your own life. So actually sit down with you for a full 90 minutes. So imagine an hour and a half with me with this energy and I sit down with you and, and we carefully look at your life and look at what's bothering you, what's in the way, what's the main thing you want to get in life, what are the problems and challenges that you're facing and actually analyze them and I'm going to help you break them down and look at them in a completely different way that's going to empower you and allow you to get these things, then just sign up at primatica.com slash 10x. And again, you're going to see the link here in chat in a moment. Uh, oh, it's already here. So uh, primatica.com slash 10x. Just go there, schedule a 90-minute call with me, and I promise you it's going to change your life. You're going to change the way that you look at, thing, at things, and it's going to help you make the rest of your year, the last, you know, we've got like 40 days till the end of the year. It's going to make the next 40 days the best 40 days of this year. So do that. You can also go to my YouTube channel. So go to youtube.com and search for Robbie Frank, my name, and uh, you'll see my YouTube channel. I upload constantly there and the quality keeps improving as we go. So you're going to have a recording of this uh, lecture. It's going to play, basically, when we finish this, it's, it's going to start about uh, 20 minutes later and it's going to be like, like live uh, recording. And you'll also have a summary. So this entire lecture, you're going to have a full summary in it. Uh, finally, if you have any last questions, feel free to text me them right now because we're going to finish in a moment. And if any questions come up later, uh, just send them to Robbie at Primatica.com uh, and let me know again if you have any, any questions. So uh, thank you guys for attending. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. Again, this is going to go on YouTube. So feel free to share this with anybody you want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the lovely comments. And uh, I'll see you guys hopefully next week. We do this every single week. Uh, let me even uh, paste here the link because I'm not sure that everybody, that uh, my team has it. Uh, here we go. So you can sign up with this link. Uh, sorry, let me just make sure everybody gets it. Here we go. You can sign up for next week's meeting as well. And again, if you want to really change your life today, uh, go to primatica.com slash 10 and sign up to a call with me. I guarantee you it's going to change your life. So thank you so much, guys, and hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.